Hello everyone, welcome to Excel Highway, your one-stop shop for all your Excel needs. Today I want to help you answer a question if you are uh, searching to understand your inventory position. Do you have too many stock or too little? And how can you balance a network? Which is very common in today's uh, operation with the shortages in, in supply and companies need to try to balance their inventories based on what they have. So this sheet basically has a, a few, sorry, this workbook has a few sheets that hold the data and a final sheet, which is the inventory plan, which gives you the layout. And this is where you actually play. So let's take a look. There's a sheet called forecast where you input the forecast. There's an inbound delivery sheet where you input the inbound deliveries. On hand is what you have currently. Target stock and average demand here are parameters that we will use. And inventory plan where you see the uh, rollout of your inventory. So each table, this is supposed to simulate some sort of file that you can generate with data that you pull from different sources or if you don't have sources then you just have to build it yourself. Um, I'm adding a, uh, these are all tables, okay, but I'm, what I'm adding is an end of the month formula for the date, so I have a, a unified name, so I just want to work in a monthly bucket. This is why I have this formula here. I have it for all of the sheets. So for inbound, you have a specific delivery date. For me, I want to see everything on a monthly bucket. Okay, and the hierarchy here is a simple one. There's the SKU number and the location. I have a few DCs, I have a few SKUs. On hand, don't need a date because that's always what we have right now. And in the target stock sheet, I have two parameters. What's the target stock in months and what's the average demand? Okay, now let's go to inventory plan so you see the, the, uh, the rollout of, of the plan. So we have the SKU number, the location, the average demand. So this is coming from here, right? There's the on hand, inbound, and forecast. So the on hand, as you can imagine, is pulling data from the on hand sheet. The inbound is pulling data from the inbound sheet. And the forecast is pulling data from the forecast sheet. It's all just a few sum ifs. The forecast I'm uh, pulling with a negative sign. For each item, if you have more than one DC, there's also a total line. The total line is supposed to help you understand do you have the ability to balance your network. So most of the formulas here are just the sum of the upper data. The closing inventory is basically the on-hand inbound forecast and simulation transfer, which we'll get to that in a second. Closing inventory in months, it's the closing inventory divided by the average demand, the same number that we had over here. Now you could use rolling forecast instead as the denominator or an average demand or whatever you want to use here, that's up to you. But this is just a formula so you can change the denominator. Gap to safety stock, this is simple calculation. I'm taking the average demand, which is what I'm using as the uh, uh, demand, times the target stock in months, okay, which is, this is the parameter coming from here. And the gap is the maximum of zero and whatever I have on hand. I'm using the max of zero so that um, I don't get a ne negative number if I have a gap. So this is the, the, the uh, gap in months, which is simpler. It's the closing inventory in months minus the target stock in months. So per, per uh, row, per DC and SKO, it's pretty straightforward. The only difference here is with the total. You have sums except for this one. Okay. Here I, where I do something reverse. Um, in order to calculate the target stock, I'm using some product. Basically, I'm, I'm calculating a weighted average. So 
I'm going to use the average demand as the weight, and this is the target. So basically, this gives me a weighted average of 1.4. Um, as you see, it's, it's very close to the 150 and 120, which are bigger than the 80. Okay, that's why it's giving 1.4. And this is um, how the, uh, the gap is calculated. Okay, because I cannot sum. If I sum the gap, that wouldn't make any sense. Okay, so I have to change the formula. So everything here is, is um, copied down. Um, over here on the right, you have another month. If you want to see the impact of another month, so it's the same formula. I have a bunch of sum ifs with the month, DC, and location. Uh, and this is just shows me the same results. Now here's the, the interesting part, the nice part for you, is the simulation of the transfer. Now, you can see in red where you have <coughs> sorry, negative inventory which you have to handle immediately if you can. And you have in um, yellow here um, combinations where you have a gap to the target stock. So you're not, you know, you don't have negative inventory, but your target stock is 1.5, you are at 0.3, so you have a negative 1.2. This is where you can balance the inventory and understand what are the implications for the first month and also for the current for the next month so in this case I can transfer at least 90 here and 50 here and I have to take it from DC number two and this is how I balance the inventory and you see I can still I still have some excess inventory so I can maybe even pull some more and Okay, so here I'm actually above my inventory, my safety stock. Here I can pull some more. Let's see. Okay, this may be too much. No, okay, so this is a very nice situation where I balance the inventory. Uh, next month I still have an issue, but we can handle that next month. Here on the bottom I have an example where that's not going to help. Uh, if I transfer um, 25, I don't have 25, I only have negative 15, so I cannot. So this shows me that even if I transfer, I'm still going to be out of stock, which means maybe it's not even worth transferring between the DCs. So this was the file. All you need to do to use it is update the forecast, the inbound on hand and the target stock and everything here will be updated automatically of course if you change the SKU locations then you need to make sure to do it for all the sheets and especially here for the inventory plan so this is um, my recommendation on how to handle your inventory balancing using Excel hope you enjoyed the video if you did please subscribe click on the like button and leave a comment. Take care.